Product development experiment day. What are we working with now? Boom. What is this? Biomass. I'm not going to say exactly what, but we're going to put some grams of it in a beaker, add an enzyme, and let's see what kind of proteins we can get out of it. So we need a 10% solids in solution, and uh, so we're going to add about 100 grams. That'll go into about a liter of water. Closer. <laughs> Boom. Good enough. Boom, do -dum, do -dum, do -dum, do -dum. Boom. Now, if you've never worked with potassium hydroxide, one, I'm going to recommend you don't. Two, is it is extremely caustic, uh, and it will dissolve the outer layer of your skin, the oils and fats out of it. And so, not something you want to handle with your bare, bare hands. Five grams into the container. Now, before we add it in here, we want to get it uh, agitating. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put my thermometer on here as well, too. I'm going to get this seated over drop it in and uh now let's get a stir bar Boop. now we're gonna let this mix for hours and hours and hours and let it start to chew up that biomass mixing here's our koh Ooh. oh ph ph strip these things come in big handy it's a great way that you can just test and see exactly where you're at. So, this color here is offensively purple. We take a look here, hold it up to it. You know, we're 12, yeah, pH of 14, without a doubt. 13, 14. Now, cook. When you're doing one of these enzymatic hydrolysis uh, reactions with this biomass, you have to pay attention to the pH. That's how you uh, can monitor the degree of hydrolysis that's taking place. So we're just going to check the pH here and see if it's dropped. We started at 8, and uh, now we're going to see where we are. We'll do a quick, we'll do a quick little uh, strip test here and see. Looks like we are... Right there at about 7. We'll get an A, more accurate reading on this. Okay, pH is 7.5. That means the uh, it is it is uh, dropping. That means the enzyme is working. And uh, so we're going to let it continue to do its thing. And I think we've got about two more hours on it. And uh, then we'll be ready for filtration. Aye. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. You think you're getting ready to go home. You go to fire on the dryer to run for about 20 minutes to finish something up and you get an error. So I go to turn on the burner and I am not getting a flame. Why am I not getting a flame? Well, you pull out the multimedia check, you make sure you're getting voltage at your igniter, then you check your amperage and your ohms here at your ignition transformer all of that was good then you got to go break into it and pull out your igniter which is basically just a spark plug right i mean you, you can see that that looks like a, a pretty average spark plug it was a little dirty gave it a good clean we're gonna put this bad boy in here we're gonna put this bad boy back in here i tested it with the uh you know, with the ohm meter and uh it's doing much better now at uh, detecting continuity. So, let's get this in or not. I'm going to go from the top. So maybe you can. The igniter goes on top. Please. Going as hell. Scared I was going to cross thread it.
Okay. Put this back on. Alright. Put that now. We'll put the flame rod in. This is what protects the presence of a flame. Cool. Slate. I haven't met anyone that likes Slate. Just throwing that out. <laughs> now we're good. Now we're purging. Hey, hey. Uh, I have a 210 second purge. So, I'll check back. All right, so it should go to ignition shortly. Drive the light off, ignition. I heard the click from the gas, pilot trial. This is where it's lighting the gas. It does a 10 second light off. Main flame trial for 10 seconds. And we got a flame. She's chooching. That's the kind of chooch we need. See the flame rod glowing red in there? That's what I'm talking about. We're cooking with gas. All right. There it is. That's how to wind down the day. Always <laughs> fix it. Oh, but we got it. One more thing I forgot. So we were working on the uh, hydraulic. After it's been filtered, there we go. We got a couple more rounds of filtering to go. And then we'll uh, send it off for analysis. Couple things that we can do is, you know, test total to dissolved solids and stuff. And uh, as of Right now, uh, that's coming in at roughly 10 parts per million. We'll get a reading on what the MPK analysis is. It should be coming in somewhere around like a five or six on the end. And uh, we'll go with it from there. All right, so I'll give a little recap. I realize I'm talking about this. No one, I, you know, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've done one of these, so I'm going to do it. Uh, I don't even know if people know what I do for a living now. So yeah, we still manufacture products. Some of it fertilizer, a lot of it's not too. Uh, but a fair part of our business also is research and development, like product development. So we will do contract work for other companies where we will work as their R&D arm. So perhaps they have an idea for a product or they have an input that they need turned into a product. And so we will bridge that gap. But I, I'm showing what's going on with the enzymatic hydrolysis and I realize like why why would I be doing that again that's another uh, company contacts us because they have a feedstock they feel like it's not being properly utilized and I will agree it's not being properly utilized in the current markets it serves and so we wanted to take a look at uh, utilization in the, the green industry I would say probably what gets me most excited about being on this part of it right now is you'll hear all these fancy ass buzzwords in the industry like circular economy you know, upcycling is another one what that means is that sometimes you're taking legit waste i'll give you an example if i recall correctly the uh, production of acetaminophen which is also known as tylenol are thiosulfates and I think anyone in lawn care that has had an ag distributor approach them has been approached on utilizing potassium thiosulfate or ammonium thiosulfate. And uh, like I said, both of those are waste streams from the production of another product. But what gets me excited is being able to repurpose things, whether it be a waste stream or not, and feed it into the green industry in some 
the former fashion. When, for instance, if we do take a feedstock and say, like, you know, we're doing an enzymatic hydrolysis of it, you know, how do we, the waste that's generated from that, how do we repurpose it, right? Little example of one of the very, very small things we play around with. And uh, so we'll make about a gallon of this material. It'll go into greenhouse trials in maybe one day in the spring or maybe one day in the fall it might show up in a distributor near you. I don't know. I can't personally say that's how it works in the R&D world. I can't say who we're doing it for or why we're doing it or whatever the case. Uh, maybe it'll show up there and everybody can be real real happy and make a lot of money with it. I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to grab my wife's hand. And we're going to go out the door. And we're not going to come home until Sunday night. Good old Woo!